Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in this week. This past week we had Pastor Shem preaching, right, yep. but he's away this week. That's right, so we're doing this together. We're gonna do this together this week again. So this past week, we were in the book of Acts. Right, Shock, Shock, chapter shocker. 27, <laughs> we're almost finished. We're almost there. Two we, more sermons. Two more ser preachers. sermons in yep. the book of Acts, so we're just in the final bit. So we're right. seeing that Paul, he's on a ship, and he's on his way to Rome. Right, he's on his way to Rome. Uh, there's kind of some colossal events that happen, catastrophic things, you know. Uh, he basically says, unless we do this, everyone's gonna lose their life. They start throwing stuff overboard. Yep. The ship gets wrecked, and it's just, you know, this this talk of storms. So, mm -hmm. Pastor Sam talked a lot about storms and kind of the storms of life, and, mm -hmm. and wanted to seed into us this idea of like hope and faith. And uh, Paul ultimately is like one who is hopeful in this because yeah. he believes he's gonna survive because he knows he's gonna testify in Rome one of the things he says in that mm -hmm. chapter. I gotta go to Rome, I gotta testify in Rome. So he is sure, mm -hmm. he's holding on to hope. He is yep. not gonna drown here. Uh, and uh, so yeah, huge kind of crisis and kind of chaos is happening in that moment. And Pastor Sam kind of brought us through how do we think through times like this mm -hmm. when we feel like we're in kind of the crisis or the storm. Yeah, and so with, with faith and hope, that theme of faith and hope, um, there was a couple things that Pastor Shem brought us to that faith yep. and hope, it points us ultimately to Jesus. Right, yeah. That what Jesus is saying in each moment is actually what's what's true, which is interesting. In this story, we see that there's this storm that everyone thinks they're going to die, but even though Paul's a prisoner, he's given influence, right? Totally. And he's the people eventually listen to him, and it ends up saving their right. lives. Yeah. And so it's interesting how faith and hope pointed him to Jesus. It pointed him to know that he wasn't alone. That's right. That God had never yep. abandoned them. And that was one of the other points that Pastor Shem had pointed to was yeah. that faith and hope reminds us that we are never alone yeah. and that God is with us. Yeah, I think there's this, this concept there that, that when we take uh, hope and faith uh, in the words of Jesus where he says, surely I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He's, he's always there. He's always with us. So one of the things that we can do, and it's not a self-effort, it's really like effort that the Spirit puts in, is that we can kind of lean back and lay back into Jesus, the one who's been in the boats with the disciples, mm -hmm. who's walked on the water, who's stilled the storms. He is there in every storm. And, you know, I relate this to a bit of what we talked about in the sermon uh, before, is this idea of like, the Lord doesn't always prevent bad things happening to us, but he's always present in all of those bad mm -hmm. things. So he doesn't, he doesn't prevent uh, every sickness, he doesn't pre prevent every accident, but he's always present in those things. And that's what we see in the story of Paul. That's really what uh, Pastor mm -hmm. Shem was preaching, is that f faith can be present in those situations. Why? Yeah, because Jesus is present in those situations. Uh, hope can be present mm -hmm. in those situations. Why? Because Jesus is present in those situations. Yeah, I think that's a good reminder for us to kind of debunk that myth that right. just because we have a God of love doesn't mean that hard stuff happens in yeah. life. Yep. And it's actually, we see that God's strength is showcased yeah. in those moments. Right, and it reminds me actually in one of the gospel passages where Jesus is talking about um, uh, the people who died in the Tower of Siloam when it fell or, or people who mm -hmm. Pilate uh, killed some people and their, their blood was mixed with the sacrifice and they're like, do you think there are any worse sinners? It's like sometimes mm -hmm. we have this view that was contemporary at that time of Jesus that if people were horrible people, bad things happened to them. But the truth is that there's things that happen to all of us that we can't always explain, but uh, the Lord allows them, but he's still present in those times. And I think really this this idea of, of having faith rather than giving way to fear. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions we want to kind of put out to you today is this idea, Pastor Shem said this quote, uh, fear is a liar. Hmm. Fear is a liar. Uh, hmm. And so one of the questions I would want to ask you and put to you, you know, when you feel like you are facing a lie that is fearful or a fear-based lie, what hmm. is it that that lie is? Because first of all, I think when you expose it, you get it out into the light. That's hmm. where Jesus does his best work is in the light. He, he's always casting hmm. light into darkness. So what's that thing of fear? What's that lie of fear? Um, hmm. And I know it, when Pastor Shem was illustrating, if you haven't watched the sermon, it's a good sermon to watch with his water bottle, like, yeah. you know, when you're in the storm and all of a sudden he's spray spraying his face <laughs> with the water. And, uh, you know, even in those minutes, moments where, where we're getting bashed by the waves and fear feels like it's all around us, there's something that the Lord wants to speak into that he wants to contradict those lies. So mm -hmm. that's one of the questions that, that I know I had for us is, is what is the lie fear wants to tell us? Uh, and then second of all, how do we combat that? Mm -hmm. And I think knowing the word is one important thing. It's good to know Jesus is with us. 
uh, but it's active to also know that the word of God is is powerful in those situations. So, yeah. Yeah, and with that, I think one of the final um, points that Pastor Shem landed on was this point that God is the God of the mountaintop moments, but he's also the God of the valley Lovely, moments. Yeah. And yeah. so we kind of see that throughout scripture, this imagery of the mountaintop and the valley and you, we've all encountered them in our lives, right. mountaintop yeah. moments and valley moments. But I think what is a good takeaway from that is knowing mm-hmm. knowing the word, but then also when we're in those valley moments, recalling the mountain right. moments or recalling right. the truth and reminding ourselves mm-hmm. of, okay, this is actually who God is and yeah. this is actually what my situation is. Right. And I think, yeah, just what you said too with debunking the lie. Right. And yeah. that's often when we're in those valley moments we can't see beyond it, but mm-hmm. it's through focusing on those yeah. those truths that we can actually see beyond the, that situation. The other question I throw out to you is, is who are the people around you that help you come out of those hmm. fear lies or those places where you feel like the storm is the only thing? Uh, and, you know, Jesus said, you know, in this world you will have trouble. But then he said the best phrase, take heart, I've overcome the world. Hmm. And that's a good scripture to know, but sometimes we need someone to remind us of it and be like, hey, man, you know, like, take heart, like yeah. take heart, Jesus has overcome. So another reflection is, who are the people around you that really are kind of the champions of that for you, that can speak the word of God to you, who can give you the gospel that you need uh, mm-hmm. and allow you to hear that thing? Think about who are those people around you. We all need those people around you. Mm-hmm. And in this time of COVID, uh, as restrictions are, are, are looking like they're starting to ease, we can start reengaging in some of those relationships mm-hmm. in a non-digital way. Um, and those are, those are good and positive things. Yeah. One, of, one of the other things that Pastor Shem said is he talked about these two phrases like uh, God using your story for his glory. Hmm. Whether you're in the storm or you're on the mountaintop, God can use your story for his glory. So be reminded of this, if we leave you with one reminder, is that no matter what you've lived through, no matter what you're living through, God wants to use that story of your life, uh, walking through the hard times, the good times, to glorify his son and to glorify Hmm. Jesus. And that's really powerful because all through the life of Jesus, everything he walked through from uh, his temptation all the way through to his crucifixion, he saw all those things for the glory of God, yeah. and he wants us to have that perspective and, and know that your story is valuable. Your story mm-hmm. is worth something because it can be turned into glory for God. Mm. And uh, yeah, even through the storms of life, he can get glory. Yeah. Any last thoughts that you want to leave us with? Uh, no, I just, I really believe that, you know, some of you, like Pastor Shem said in the end, he talked about uh, Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones. Uh, and some people, you just need the breath of life in you. As, as mm-hmm. God said to Ezekiel, prophesy the breath, prophesy the breath. They were standing up. They had bones, standing mm. sinews, a flesh, but didn't have breath. Some yeah. of you just need to feel the Lord prophesy fresh breath into you. So I'm mm. going to ask Brayden just to pray just the fresh breath of the Spirit into you and uh, upon you uh, that you would just feel like enlivened by that. So why don't you just pray for everyone? Yeah. yeah. So Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good. Mm. And we thank you that um, you provide hope for us. And the hope that you provide for us is a, an anchor for our soul. And no matter what season we're in, whether it's a, a mountaintop season or a valley season or a storm, God, we thank you that you are in control. So, Lord, we just declare uh, to anyone who needs the encouragement or the hope or the joy of your spirit that your breath would come and you would fill them. Lord, we pray for the breath of life to come and just bring renewal to people's hearts and minds and to their spirits. So Jesus, we thank you that you are good and we thank you that you love us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week.